Good morning from the Kennedy Space Center. We're back for the media day for the opening of the Astronaut Training Center. Very excited about this one. It's a little experience where you get to kind of get the idea of what astronauts go through before they go up into space. We get to do some training. I'm excited, let's go check it out. We've made it inside Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. You can tell here, there's the uh, external boosters and the external fuel tank. We're headed over to the Astronaut Training Center to get a quick sneak peek. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna go inside and we're going to check everything out, experience some of the experiences, then the first class ever that is going to experience the Astronaut Training Center is gonna come in and we get to watch them train to be astronauts. Here it is, this is what we're headed to, the Astronaut Training Experience. This is exciting. training floor. So those of you who have signed up to land and drive on Mars are going to begin in this training control center. You're then using that data to provide them with coordinates for their landing and driving. So there's a lot of back and forth on that. So what we're doing in here is we are preparing people for the next generation of astronaut training. Our previous program, the one that we're still currently running at our old facility, deals with training for a shuttle program. Of course, that has been retired. So now what we're doing is we're looking at training astronauts to go into deep space. And we're focused here on training you for Mars because we believe that Mars is definitely a goal that NASA's pursuing. For our walk on Mars, we have, again, that virtual reality for different Martian terrains. And you are doing a variety of experiences in those terrains. Then for the microgravity, we're using a frictionless environment. So you sit in one of those hover chairs and actually on a cushion of air lifts you up just enough so that you slide across the floor without any resistance. You're going to use a tether to hook yourself onto the truss because we don't want you to drift off into space. Yes, we're actually later this week going to be opening um, some of these components. In fact, later on today, we've got our first class coming in. We've got a couple of astronauts and selected guests who are gonna come in and experience these three activities. The full center, and I'll tour you through our Mars Base One in a little while, the full center we're scheduled to open in February. We're gonna go drive right on Mars first. We just got out of the simulator and somebody was here directing us what to do and now we're going to direct them what to do on this screen. So right now they're driving on the surface of Mars. Look, you can see them going over bumps and mountains and everything. I'm gonna experience microgravity. You can kind of see what's happening right there. We've got this camera set up to capture me experiencing it. And what they do is they set you in this chair and then you're on a bed of air and then they give you tasks. Somebody's talking to you through a microphone with teamwork and you come in and you have to move different switches, unplug different plugs and do all kinds of other stuff. This guy's gonna have an astronaut helping him out, doing safety. This is John McBride, the most interesting thing I've ever seen. An astronaut who's actually been in space, trying to teach somebody who's never been in space how to control themselves as if they were in space. As far as the microgravity environment goes, this is what the controller sees here. And this person is giving the person that is in the little hover chair over here directions on what to do. They have a camera on their helmet so they can see what they're doing. Next, I'm gonna go walk on Mars using this VR headset.
This is what I was seeing when I was in there. And this is astronaut Sam Durant using VR and getting to visit Mars. This is the teammate that is giving the person with the VR headset on directions on where to go. Here's astronaut Bob Springer doing some exploring virtually on Mars. Now we're gonna go into the other side of the building which is Mars Base 1, which is like a Mars experience. We're going to Mars, that's what everybody's saying, we're going to Mars. This is actually a five hour program, so it's, it's a good full day worth of astronaut training. But in addition to doing this kind of thing, we also wanted to do something that was a little more immersive for those people who want to know what it would be like to go and live and work on Mars. So in addition to the astronaut training experience, we built Mars Base One. And I'm going to take you to Mars now. You guys all ready to go? We're walking across the gantry and we're going to our rocket to go up into space. But as we go up the launch tower, this shakes, rattles, and rolls. You see the space launch system going by. You begin to get an, ex a, an understanding of the sheer scale of that spacecraft as you go up and up and up and up. Then when we get to the top of the launch tower, the airlock doors open and we move into our Pegasus capsule. Well, this is exciting. But the Pegasus is a module that loads into our other spacecraft. So while you're in the Pegasus, we don't need to be space suited. We don't need to constantly move from one spacecraft to another. We're just gonna strap in to enjoy the ride to Mars. With our current technology, it takes us between six and nine months to get to Mars. But NASA is looking into ion drive and plasma engines, which we understand can get us there in six weeks. That's still a long time to sit strapped in the Pegasus. So we're going to put you in a state of conscious hibernation. And those six weeks are going to fly by in just a few minutes. You're going to take off from Earth, go to Mars, land on the surface of Mars, and then drive in a rover to Mars Base One. Do you want to be sedated for six weeks? No. We're going to start you out in our base operations lab. So you're going to have to run communications and cartography and satellite imagery. And you have to work together to solve this base crisis in about 15 minutes. Come on in. Now ordinarily, our program is going to be having you spend a full day on Mars base. We are programming a team of robots You'll have up to four robots on your table at a time, and you're going to be programming those robots to work together to clear the dust off of these photovoltaic panels to generate as much solar energy as you can for the base. This is our Mars Life Sciences Lab, also known as the Botany Lab. This room is a little bit different from anything else on Mars. But what we're doing in here, if this feels like a science lab, that's because this is a science lab. This is actually, we are growing a variety of plants under a variety of conditions. We're collecting that data. We're sending that data to NASA, and NASA is using that data to determine what other pilot programs they're going to test. And they have some right microgreens that they said that we can try. I don't know what this is, but it's a little it's microgreen that I'm going to eat. Mars dirt. Of course, we don't have any dirt from Mars. But we had some That's of really the good. Uh, NASA it's engineers. Very tasty. Now you did. We never saw the frog. We just saw evidence. Ah. Yeah. But, that was yeah, neat. We, I did it. I performed a spacewalk today. So that has been a little taste of the astronaut training center. Opens in February, like they said. Super fun. Like I can't wait for you guys to come out and to be able to experience this. They said it's good for school groups, uh, team building activities. Of course, regular day guests can come in and do it. It will be an extra charge. But the other thing that I did find out is that you don't have to come into the visitor center or pay to come into the visitor center to do the astronaut training experience. You can set it up as a separate ticketed event which is pretty darn awesome. But we also wanted to show you guys Holidays in Space, which is a holiday themed event that happens here in the Rocket Garden. So let's check that out. Time travel, and we're back. Nighttime here at Kennedy Space Center. We're going to see Holidays in Space. And I'm here. And we also get to, yeah, Jen's here now too. <laughs> and we also get to see Fighting Gravity, which I'm really excited to see because they are a, like a dance group and they use black light and all kinds of other neat illusions. I'm excited to see all this. Me too. This is holidays in space. Look, there's a planet there. It looks like Mars. 
then the moon and there's earth and oh look the rockets are all lit up check this out there is a mars rover concept vehicle here here's the setup for fighting gravity look everybody's got their chairs set up in the lawn over here and then apparently after the show if we look to our left there's going to be some pyrotechnics that are not actually pyrotechnics i'm excited to find out what that means And then after the show, over here in the rocket garden, they have the rockets all lit up in Christmas colors with snowflakes on them. There it is. Earlier I said I couldn't wait to see the Christmas tree all lit up, and now it's all lit up, and it looks good. I really love it. It reminds me of like a 50s, like a retro style tree with the panels. Yeah. Cool. Take a look at the rocket garden all lit up in all kinds of different Christmas colors. I like this one in the center here that's flashing all kinds of different colors. This is pretty awesome, and I love the, the picture opportunity here, the photo op. Oh yeah. It's very cute. We found the Fighting Gravity merchandise. This is pretty cool. I think this is the back. Oh, and, and it glows, it glows in, the dark. in the dark. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. So there you have it. That was another trip out to Kennedy Space Center. We got to see the astronaut training experience, which was really cool. I wish I had gotten to see it. It yeah. looked pretty fun. And then we went back later at night to see Fighting Gravity and the little tiny fireworks show that they tell us wasn't fireworks what they ha they called it something special they called it cold pyro but it was something else was it was that the full name uh, i think it was like cold pyrotechnics oh like a, okay <laughs> like a full out name <laughs> all right but it was neat it was very yeah. interesting I, I would be interested to see because they said that when it there's no debris like yeah. it just cracks open and then that is the debris whatever it cracked open out of yeah so i'd like to see this like fireworks egg 
I think that it's, uh, so Disney does something very similar called an air launch, and that's the ones they do off the castle. And oh. those are safe enough to do within range of people. So that's, I think it's the same type of firework that Disney uses. Gotcha, so. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I don't and know, then, it was cool to see though. And then Fighting Gravity was, they were really neat. Yeah, I wanted, I would like to see like how they did that. Like I think yeah. I know how they did that kind of, but I'd like to see the whole thing without the illusion. Yeah. Which I know would, would ruin the illusion. But like, I'm just curious, you know? You know. Yeah. But yeah, it was cool. All in all, fun times. If you guys are around the Kennedy Space Center or in Orlando this holiday season, mm -hmm. highly suggest heading out there. One thing we did notice is that you got to bring your own chair. Oh yeah, we didn't have our chairs. Yeah. So we were standing, which was fine because it wasn't like a super long show. Yeah, and yeah. there were bleachers too available, but oh yeah, you had a much more pleasant experience sitting on the lawn chairs. Yeah, it was cool. And then there was this kid next to us that uh, he was really amazed by it. Yeah. So that was cute. Blew his mind. Yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, we are off, and we will see you guys tomorrow. And now, now it's time, time to pay, pay the, the price. price.